<coughs> Eat slowly. You'll get indigestion. And make sure you chew your food well before swallowing it. Chewing your food is the first step in the process of digestion. When you chew your food, complex food gets broken down into simpler form. This lesson is about nutrition in different types of organisms. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define heterotrophic nutrition Explain heterotrophic nutrition with respect to unicellular and multicellular organisms. List the organs of digestion. Describe the process of digestion in human beings and explain how saliva prevents tooth decay. Each organism is adapted to its environment. The form of nutrition depends on the type of food as well as how it is obtained by the organism. For example, a deer gets its nutrition from grass and the tiger in turn feeds on the deer. Animals that depend on plants or other animals for their nutrition are called heterotrophs. This type of nutrition is called heterotrophic nutrition. Do all heterotrophic organisms take their food in the same manner? No. Different organisms obtain and ingest their food in different ways. Fungi, like bread molds, yeast and mushrooms, break down non-living organic material outside their bodies before absorbing it. Parasites like kuskuta, orchids, ticks, lice, leeches and tapeworms get their food from living host plants or animals without actually killing them. Let's see how animals take in complex food and break it into simpler forms inside their bodies. Unicellular organisms like amoeba and paramecium do not have any special organs for the process of nutrition. They absorb food through their body surface. An amoeba feeds on microscopic animals that live in water. When an amoeba wants to take in a food particle, it encircles the food with its pseudopodia and the food is enclosed in a food vacuole. The food in the food vacuole is digested by lytic enzymes. The digested food diffuses into the body of the amoeba, whereas the undigested food is thrown out. Unlike an amoeba, a paramecium is slipper-shaped with cilia on its surface. Food is taken in at a specific spot on the body. When a paramecium wants to take in food, its cilia pushes the food particle towards the entry point of the food tube. Inside the body, the food enters a food vacuole, where it is broken down into simpler form. Simple molecules are absorbed and waste material is thrown out. Multicellular organisms have specialized and complex organs for digestion, which form a digestive system. In the digestive system, food is taken in broken down into a simpler form and absorbed. The waste material is thrown out. This process of breaking down of complex food material into simpler form is called 
digestion. This digested food is absorbed by the body cells that provide fuel to live, the energy to work, and the raw material to build new cells. The digestive system is made of the elementary canal that starts from the mouth and ends at the anus and includes digestive glands such as the liver and pancreas. The elementary canal is about 30 feet long in adult human beings. Mouth Pharynx Esophagus Stomach, liver, and pancreas are organs in the digestive system. The duodenum, jejunum, and ileum make up the small intestine. The cecum, appendix, colon, and rectum make up the large intestine and anus. I'm curious, how does the digestive system work? Food enters the body through the mouth, where it is crushed into smaller particles. When you see, smell or taste food, salivary glands secrete saliva in the mouth. Saliva moistens the food while you eat and helps to tear it into smaller pieces. Amylase, a digestive enzyme contained in the saliva, breaks down the starch present in the food into simpler sugar. When you swallow food, it moves down into the throat or pharynx. The epiglottis, which is a flap-like structure, closes the windpipe when you swallow, so that you don't choke on your food. Food moves through a narrow tubular muscular organ called the esophagus. The lining of the food canal has muscles that contract and expand rhythmically in order to push the food forward to the stomach. This series of muscular contractions is called peristalsis. At the end of the esophagus, a muscular ring allows the food to enter the stomach and then closes. The muscular walls of the stomach help in churning and mixing the food thoroughly with the gastric juices to break it into smaller pieces. These gastric juices contain chemicals like hydrochloric acid and enzymes like pepsin renin and lipase. Hydrochloric acid kills any germs that may have entered along with the food. It also creates an acidic medium which activates the enzyme pepsin. Pepsin breaks down proteins into peptones and proteoses. Renin separates milk into liquid and solid portions. Lipases act on fats and help to break them down. This process continues till the food is turned into a thick liquid called chyme. The acidic food from the stomach reaches the first part of the intestine called Duodenum. In the duodenum, fats are present in the form of large globules, which makes it difficult for the enzymes to act on them. These fats are broken down by the bile juice secreted by the liver. The liver is a digestive gland 
that produces bile and is stored in the gallbladder until it is required. Bile contains bile salts that break down the fat into smaller globules. Bile juice also makes the food alkaline for pancreatic and intestinal enzymes to act on it. The pancreas produces pancreatic juice that contains enzymes such as trypsin and lipase which help to break down proteins and fats. The chyme now reaches the second part of the small intestine called the ileum. In the ileum, the intestinal enzymes act upon the food for further digestion. The inner walls of the small intestine have numerous finger-like projections called villi. Villi increase the surface area of the small intestine to ensure efficient and rapid absorption of nutrients. The villi are richly supplied with blood vessels which transport the absorbed food to all the cells in the body. The small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary canal. The length of the small intestine is much shorter in carnivores as compared to herbivores. This is because herbivores eat a plant-based fibrous diet which takes longer to digest as compared to a meat-based diet. The undigested food and water then move into the large intestine. The inner lining of the colon has villi that absorb any water from solid waste. This solid material is collected in the lower part of the large intestine called the rectum. The appendix is a small, hollow, finger-like pouch which hangs at the end of the cecum. It does not have any function in the digestive system of humans. However, it is functional in herbivores such as cows. The rectum stores the solid excreta until it is ready to be excreted from the digestive system through the anus. Since saliva contains enzymes, is it harmful for the teeth? Saliva contains buffering agents that protect the teeth from decay. When we eat something sugary, bacteria produce an acid that attacks the enamel in the teeth. This removes minerals like calcium and phosphate from the teeth and makes them susceptible to decay, thereby forming plaque. Saliva contains minerals that are used to repair tooth decay. At the same time, the buffering agents in saliva neutralize the acids and prevent further decay.